concept to system. Um, and I think that will be interesting to try to implement because I think that's where they they kind of get lost is how you connect the dots between those well, things. In Finland, they base everything on the four game playing roles. So that's how you organize everything. And that's kind of what I do too. So there's offense. You either have the puck or you're supporting the puck. So those that's two of the roles. And on defense, you're either checking the puck carrier or you're covering away from the puck. So that's the other two roles. And there's three situations, offense, defense, and then loose puck. You have to work on loose puck situations. So everything they do is organized in those, those four roles and those three game situations. And then you have the progressions like you're talking about. So what you'd be talking about is uh, team offensive skills and putting sequences together, you know, about the breakout. But, of course, you also need the individual offensive skills of taking a pass and making a pass and all this kind of stuff. So, you know, it's it's got to be all sequenced together. And that that's really the challenge of teaching anything is... Uh, you know, if you've, got, if you've got a big hole in development, you're not going to be able to do the breakout anyway. But going back to your original uh, thing about uh, trigonometry, a lot of bench coaches at the younger age go right to a breakout drill. And yet, if the if the uh, puck carrier behind the net isn't got the skills to make a good pass to the wall or to the center, if that pass doesn't get made, nothing happens. And so, uh, and a lot of, a lot of that is just pure skating skill and then puck handling skills. And I found over the years, just spent probably a little more time than most on skating with and without the puck and then teaching them just enough things so they can be successful in those sequences. Cause what is it? What's a breakout? It's a, it's, you know, basically it's two passes. And skating, um, and then of course situational awareness of which 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 way you're going to go with it. It starts with the defenseman. Um, I mean, I always thought defensemen were the most important after the goalie. Defensemen really dictate how the game's going to go, especially coming out of their own zone and the decisions that they make. And too often they just throw the puck to the wall and say it's your problem now. And um, so I. You know, as a bench coach for 50 years um, and not having enough practice ever, you know, where do you where do you focus your time and your energy? I mean, that's the really the question. And how kids play. We used to play 35 or 40 games. Now the kids play 65 or 70 and practice 20 times in a season. So it, it, it's hard to it's hard to help them get better and then they go off to their skills camps in the summer and hopefully they're picking up some of those skills that they need but I, I like your idea there Kim with how do we how do we put those two together and teach them things in practice so they can immediately take to the game scenario and, um, and and that's I think it's a challenge it's an interesting challenge it's fun um, when I was working with the kids this last year the girls, switched over back over to the boys side because um, I didn't get a girl's job this year but um, you know we would work on stuff in practice and they'd come off the ice and say did you see that did you see that coach and you're like yeah that was cool you know whether it was a big 90 or a Gretzky move or whatever you know something we've been working on so the girls think about it more I don't know that the boys do yet I don't know that thinking about things at 17 is high on their list but anyways. Well, I think it's interesting, you know, like the breakout's a perfect example, right? And this is where, you know, you've got to think about skills that are appropriate for the level and mm -hmm. that brings up because like I watched a whole lot of U11 games this year and I, I don't think there were passes ever made on the breakout. It was a girl gets it, gets Eagles. possession, beats someone and skates it out. And to be quite honest, that is the most valuable skill we could teach those kids on the breakout at that age. Yep. That is, that is, you know, a skill that will serve them well going forward, right? If we could then teach them how to do a better retrieval of the puck, if we could then teach them, you know, how to support that puck, to your point, Tom, like having that support player who doesn't have the puck instead of just watching, 
and then maybe making that 10 foot, 20 foot, 30 foot pass. Um, but that, that's the challenge for those uh, bench coaches who are watching the Leafs or other better hockey teams break out. They go, well, that's what a breakout is. It's like, yes, that is a 25 year old man who's been playing hockey since <laughs> for 20 years. Um, your players can't do that. And understanding that like a U11 kid is not making a hard cross ice pass to the weak side on the break. Like it's just, but when you watch them practice, the the understanding of that that's inappropriate for the level that you know, meeting them where they are, um, they don't understand how do I, like what are the skills that will eventually get them there one day, right? Yep. So, you know, I think that's, you know, to Tom's point about curriculum and and, you know, how do you make it age appropriate, but then also don't assume that, like I work with a bunch of U15 teams this year, and I would say the majority of those D have not skated the puck out on their own in years because they've been told well, in the breakout, you stop behind the net or you go to the half wall. Yeah. Like, why would we pass it if we could just carry it out clean? I'm not oh. saying turn it over with a toe drag. It would be fun to coach against those teams. If you, if you possess the skill to skate it out, <laughs> Why would you not want them to skate it out? It's the least, you know, uh, scary play, I guess. You know, it doesn't necessarily yeah. advance the puck as quickly, but a lot of those those players, those girls have been taught that a breakout means you pass here or here, where yeah. your first option might just to be to go. Um, mm -hmm. And so they, you know, I don't know at what point that got de-emphasized or whether it's ever been emphasized. Um, I got to go plug in my computer, guys, so I'm going to crash here if I don't do that. So give me a sec. Morning, Tim. Yeah, I think I think that on what Kim's talking about, when you've got the puck, you have five options, right? Yep. It basically, you carry it out or you pass to one of the other four players and the puck's got to go to, you know, you, get, you have to make the choice of the best play at that time. That's what hockey's all about. Mm -hmm. But you can't just say, take it out because maybe someone has a good angle on you you know you're going to turn it over so you know so there's always five options and that that's a that's a hard thing like i i watch my uh grandson all, all through the the elite hockey that he played and the passes that i saw were breakouts like most of the teams could break out you know they make those passes but as soon as they get to the neutral zone only the good players made the plays. Other right. guys just carry it forever until they have no options, and then they kind of try to make a play, but the play was there before. People have to stop at the blue line for them. Nothing drives you more crazy. You know, you're wide open, someone doesn't give you the puck, then you got to stop there, and they cross the blue line with it. And that that seems to be, to me, the hardest part of the game to, you know, we've really emphasized individual skills. But playing together and, you know, that, that okay. seems to be the challenge. Does that, so does that take us back to this whole, you know, there's, there's two trades, you know, schools of thought. We can teach all kids to do this. But the reality is we can't because they don't all have the rink awareness. They don't have the processing ability. The, they don't have the ability to see the game that's happening right in front of them and they don't recognize and then I think in today's world, they also want, they want recognition all the time. They don't like to share the puck very much, but that's a different, that's a different sort of channel. But of all the kids that I've coached through the years, you know, every team's got two or three kids that are way better than, than the rest of them. Maybe if you're lucky, you get five or six, but you know, they don't skate a whole lot better they don't shoot a whole lot better, but they play the game a lot better because they have a an innate an innate understanding of the game, the co you know common reoccurring situations and kind of where to move, how to move, how to work together. And I don't know. I mean, if we could teach them all, the NHL would have a hundred teams. Yeah, but I think we can make them better. Yes, by doing things like you know. You do things like uh, a two-second game where you, you have to move the puck, and then they then that forces the teammate to get open, nope. and it forces you know, the player with the puck 
you know, to, to look and those kind of things, at least it makes them aware that there are other people on the ice and the other people on the ice, there's, uh, you know, they know they have to get open. So, so we can do stuff to make them better. And, and I agree with you. There's just some people that yeah. just have it. Like I, people say, Oh, the players now are way better. If, if the guys that played before, it would be probably exactly the same guys that make it, Yeah, you know, because they're the better athletes. They just, be more yeah. fit because you'd be doing that kind of stuff you know like so just, just trying to make every kid a little bit better and hopefully uh you know put in some like you say i like the two second game or uh, we, we had that thing we were talking about you know you you gotta i don't know was, was, was kim talking about it or um that scrimmage at the beginning you have to advance the puck can't just take it and and and, and and um, a lot of things to sort of force them to to make the you know make decisions, and a lot of the cross ice games do that really well yeah. too. Well, yeah, and that's what you know. If I if you do a drill, you tell everybody exactly what to do. That's fine; they can do that. But there's not a whole lot of thinking involved, and that's right. why you know drills have to be modified. That there's some some more thinking and all that. Like like when I go play. I play in an hour and 20 minutes and I think this NHL guy will be there. He played in the NHL for 15 years and coached. Yeah. And like, as far as the basic skills are, he's not that much better than guys that play college and all that. Yeah. But the things he does, you can't give him a bad pass. Yeah. If he can he touch it. Everything. Yeah. He, catches he can everything. Touch it, gets it. And he's a guy I told you about that takes passes with one hand all the time. He played with Gordy yeah. Howe. Gordy said that's a better way to do it. Yeah. So he takes a pass, and he's got his other arm out, you know, creating space. He creates a, yeah. little, a little bubble around himself that yeah. you can't get that puck. And then he, you know, and it just he just does things that are better. And then, then another guy might be there that he was a defenseman in the NHL for quite a while. And he's an incredible skater, but if you don't make a fake before you pass, he's going to, it's like you're passing to him. He reads <laughs> where your options are and yeah. you pass the puck and it's right on his stick. And you say, what the hell? So you have to make some kind of a fake to make him lean and then pass, or he's, he's going to yeah. intercept. And that's kind of the difference between, you know, the guys that made it to the show. Yeah, it's just a little, or little, but really super important things. But, um, yeah, it's all great. That's, I was going to add uh, just a little tidbit, and then I got to run. When we did this coaches scrimmage um, with the skills instructors, uh, the one thing that stood out with Caro, and she wasn't going full speed, is that anytime anyone on the other team touched the puck, she stole it from them. Like she would read where it was going, and that person would be like all excited that they would get it. And then she'd just steal it and go the other way, right? Like mostly in the neutral zone or, or like on the breakouts. But it was like she just was like this ghost who would appear. And all of a sudden you didn't have the puck anymore. Um, but, you know, I watched her do that, you know, at, at much higher levels for many years. But, uh, yeah, it was interesting to see these 25-year-old guys jumping up the ice thinking they were going to be getting a breakaway. And then all of a sudden the puck was gone. And she was going the other way, but uh, I appreciate you guys listening to me blabber on about the skill stuff. And uh, once I get all good. the materials, um, I, if it if it's in a format that I, I think it's easy to share, I'm I'm happy to share. Um, especially the GoPro 360 stuff. I'll, I'll be interested to see how they edit that or don't edit that. But uh, 